One problem with many tutorials is that they try to teach you everything and forget to tell you when and why to use that. In this tutorial, I'm going to take a different approach where we're going through the most common use cases of Flexbox. And with that, you're going to learn everything you need about Flexbox. If you want to follow along, be sure to check out the description to download the resources. Otherwise, if you're ready, let's get into it. When you open the project, you would find two files, index.html and style.css. And if you open the index.html in the browser, you will see something like this. You also notice here that I am using live server so that whenever we change something, the page will be reloaded and we can see the changes. If you open the index.html, you would find in total a task that we have to do. And in each task, you would find container and item. And if we open the CSS, the container is a div with a height of 200 pixel and the background color is snow. You can find it uh, over here. And the item is also a div with a width and height of 40 pixel and the background color is tomato. You can see the square boxes over here. So you can imagine that we're going to work with tomato on snow and we're going to use Flexbox to organize and distribute them. If you need more time to look into the project, feel free to pause the videos. Otherwise, if you're ready, let's get into it. For the first task, we need to align block elements in the same row. So you can see here that we have a container and then three items inside. And because item is a div element and div element is a block element, so that's why it's now stacked on each other. But what we want to do is that we want to have them next to each other. So let's go to the CSS. In the task one container, all we have to do is say display flex. And by doing this, we're setting the container to be a flex container. And because it's a flex container, it put every item inside it in one row and align them horizontally. All right, so now we solve the task number one. Let's go back to the index.html and add comment it out. For the task number two, we need to center the item in the middle of the container. So we want to move this item in the middle of the container around here. So let's go to the CSS. Under task two container, let's say justify content. And by saying justify content center, it will align the item in the center of the container horizontally. And with justify content, we also can align the item at the end of the container in the horizontal axis by saying uh, justify content flex end. And we can also say justify content flex start. And we also have under property called align item. And if I say align item center, it will align the item in the center of the container in the vertical axis. And similarly to justify content, it also have flex end where it will align the item at the end of the container in the horizontal axis, as well as in the flex start where it will align the item at the beginning of the container. So if we say align item to be center and justify content to be center, it could now center the item in the middle of the container and this is what we want all right so we are done with the task number two let's go back to the index.html and comment it out for the task number three we need to add equal space between the items so we want to have so we want to have space here and here as well so to solve this is quite simple all we have to do is to go to the task number three either container uh, we just say justify content to be space between and by saying this it will put equal space between the items and this is super useful for example in the navigation where you have to put equal space between the navigation item and because now we are looking at space between so i also want to show you that with justify content we can say justify content space evenly where it will put space between the item as well as before the first item and after the last item as well justify content also have under value which is called space around with space around it will give equal space around the item 
and you can see the effect tag over here. For, but for this task, we want to use fade between. So yet yeah, now we solve the task number three. Let's go back to the index.html and let's comment it out. For the task number four, we need to push the last item at the end of the container. So we want to put this item at the end, so around here. So let's go to the CSS. In the task number four and option one, all we have to do is say justify content space between. And by doing this, it will put the first item at the beginning and the last item at the end. And you see this pattern a lot in, for example, the navigation where we have the logo and the button, for example, or even the logo and the list of navigation item. But it will not work if we have three or more items. So for the option number two, I want to go back to the index.html and under the second item, I want to say another div. And with this div, I'm going to give it a class space. And I'm going to select the space in the CSS. So option number two, task four, option number two, and we select the space. And in here, I'm going to say flex grow equal to one. By saying this, the space would expand as much as it can. As you can see here, that it puts the first item and the second item at the beginning of the container and the third item at the end of the container. So let's move on to the option number three. In here, let's select the first child by saying test four, option three, the item, the first child. And in here, all we have to do is say flex grow equal to one. All right. By saying this, the first item would expand as much as possible. And you will see this pattern, for example, in the search input where we have the input and the icon. So now we are done with the task number four. Let's go back to the index.html and then comment it out. All right. Another common use case of Flexbox is the ability to control the size of the item. So for the task number five, you can see here that we have a container and four items with different class names. So let's go to the CSS. So for example, in here, we want to create four columns and each item take one. All we have to do is say flex grow one and I'm going to give it to all of them. So if we save that, you can see here that we have now four column and each item take one. So now what if I want to create six column and the first one take three? All I have to do is change this to be three. So now in total, we have six column, but the first one take three. All right, this is super useful, for example, in the table where we want to have different size for the column. And we also can use just flex here instead of flex grow, and it's going to work the same way as well. And by saying flex equal to one, this will equal to flex one, one and zero, which means flex grow is equal to one, flex swing equal to one, and flex basis is equal to zero. And in short, flex swing is the opposite of flex grow, and the flex basis is the default size of the item. But for now, we don't need to care too much about it. And let's delete it, and let's move on to the task number six. So let's go to the index and comment this out. So for the task number six, we need to build responsive layout with and without media query. What we have here is six item with large size. So now if we try to make the screen smaller, the item will try to squeeze to fit the container. So to fix it, let's go to the CSS. All we have to do is that in the task number six container, we say flex wrap wrap. By saying this, it will not try to squeeze in one row anymore, but it will break in the new line. And this is how you build a responsive layout without media query. But this one has a big disadvantage where we cannot control how many columns does it take in different breakpoints. So let's try to use media query to see what it looks like. So for example, in mobile screen, I want to have two columns. All I have to do is in the item, we say with equal to 50% and now it could create a two column layout but in the bigger screen I want to have 
follow column for example now you can see here that we have a media query with mean width of 375 pixels so if the screen is bigger than this number i want to have four columns so all we have to do is say width to go to 25 percent so now if we make the screen to be bigger you can see that now we have four columns and because now we are trying to learn flex i also want to show you that we can use flex basis here and flex basis here as well and it will work the same way and by using this we can create responsive trail width column but yeah now we are done with task number six let's move on to the task number seven so let's comment the number six out for the task number seven we need to change the order of the items and this is not common as i'm not using this that often and you can see here that we have four items and each item have a different class name so let's go to style.css in here in the item one now if i want to put the item one at the end of the row all i have to do is say order equal to one by default all the item has the order equal to zero and now because I give the item 1 and order 1, so 1 is the biggest number in the list. That's why 1 is now at the end of the list. So the same with number 3, if I say order equal to 2, and 2 is now the biggest number, so now it's at the end of the list. And order also support a minus number. So for example, if I say order equal to minus 1 in the item number 3, it now put the item 3 at the beginning of the list as number two and four has order equal to zero and zero is bigger than minus one all right so this is good to know but this is not common so let's move on to the task number eight and let's go to the index and let's comment it up for the last task we want to be able to change position of one item and this is not common but i still want to show you so let's go to style.css in here, uh, we have a property called align self. And with align self, you can give it a flex end, for example. Now the item would be at the end of the container in the vertical axis. So this one is flex start and this one is flex end. We also can give it a center value. And now it will be a center in the vertical axis. So that's it for the task number eight. And let's go back to the index.html and uncommon everything so the last thing i want to show in this tutorials is flex direction so if i say flex direction equal to column now instead of everything aligned in the horizontal axis it will be aligned in the vertical axis and for example in the task number three i say flex direction equal to equal to column and you can see here that it works the same way so it's kind of similar if you rotate your screen 90 degree but anyway, you can play more around with flex direction column and everything we learned is still applied for the column direction. But instead of in the horizontal axis, it's going to be applied to the vertical axis. So I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a lot about Flexbox. If you haven't yet, check out devchallenges.io and follow me on Twitter and also subscribe to my channel. And other than that, happy coding and see you in the next video. Bye.